Let me, uh, let me say a couple of things here, and then we'll uh, continue with uh, activities. Uh, the last six weeks, uh, it's been crazy. Uh, people have been saying uh, lovely things about us, uh, and it's really been over the top. And I can't tell you how flattering, embarrassing, and gratifying it has all been. I, I have two things to say about this. First of all, uh, we've done over 6,000 shows, and I was... Without I was here for most of them, and I, <laughs> and I can tell you, a pretty high percentage of those shows just absolutely suck. Well, so now, <laughs> and also, in light of all of this praise, merited or not, do me a favor, save a little for my funeral, all right? Okay. I'd appreciate it. Paul and I came here uh, 22 years ago. Uh, from NBC, and uh, a fellow by the name of Howard Stringer was the, the man who ran CBS in those days. And he uh, wanted us to do the show here in this theater. And, and Paul and I said, okay, we'll go take a look at it. But frankly, it was a dump. I mean, it was, it was a huge, horrible uh, dump. It, you, it was not certified for habitation. <laughs> and, and we came in, and this is a true story, crawling with rats, big rats, but, but there were so many rafters and beams falling down, the, and this is also true, the rats were stoop-shouldered. Now that's absolutely, absolutely a true story. Uh, but he turned it in along, uh, turned it into this beautiful theater, Hal Gurney, uh, also uh, helped, uh, and, and now look at it. And we've, we've come to call this home uh, each and every day and, and love it more and more, and what a wonderful place to do a show and, and what tremendous music that this place has housed over the years. <laughs> and in those days, Kathleen Ankers also helped them uh, design it, and it had to, uh, yeah, she was wonderful. It, it had to meet uh, architectural regulations because it's a landmark structure uh, here in the city. And uh, quickly, we, we grew to love it. And then, then Howard uh, Stringer left, and I believe now he is in charge of a string of very successful uh, nail salons. That's nice. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then a man uh, named Les Moonves uh, took over, and Les is still with us uh, today. And uh, Les came in, and I, I will just say a, a few things about our relationship with Les Moonves. This man, over the years, has been uh, a friend to the show. He has been very supportive uh, of the show, and he has been more than patient with me. And if this was a printed uh, uh, sheet of paper, you could underline patient several dozen <laughs> times. So I would like to thank Mr. Moonves for that support. And the crew, what a tremendous crew we have had here. The people you see on the stage, the people you don't see on the stage, the people you see upstairs, the props department, the audio, the cameras, the makeup, the wardrobe, the scenic, it goes on and on and on. And these people, night after night, have uh, put up with my nonsense and taken great care of not just me, but everybody on the show. My thank you to everybody involved with that. The staff, what a tremendous staff, and uh, was, uh, we have researchers, and these poor people uh, work in some kind of subterranean pit. Yeah, well. There is no natural light there whatsoever, but yet they come in day in and day out and they do the work. We have, we have the talent coordinators, they bring the guests in. Uh, we have the segment producers, they put together the segments. We have uh, producers, we have uh, uh, people uh, in the control room. I've never been in the control room. Is the control room, let me have a shot of the, oh, there they are. Hi everybody, how's it going? I'm Dave. Let's keep it to three drinks today, okay? <laughs> and of course, the writers. Throughout the years of uh, this show and the show at NBC, 
Uh, I have been blessed and lucky to work with men and women who are smarter than I am and funnier than I am, and I have always been interested in doing the show that the writers have given me. Now, these people collectively that I have just now mentioned and introduced, believe me, this is absolutely the truth, deserve more credit for this show than I ever will. Thank you to all of those people. And now, folks we see every night, my thanks to our announcer, Alan Coulter. I don't know of a better announcer than Alan Coulter. Thank you, Dave. A guy who has been with me for 35 years, and mostly every day he and I have been involved in making television shows, Biff Henderson. Biff, where are you? There's Biff Henderson right there. Thank you, Biff. God bless you. Here's what I will miss most about this show, and we will start now with Felicia Collins. Felicia Collins, Sid McGinnis, Will Lee, Anton Fig, Tom Malone, Frank Green, Aaron Height, and my good, good friend, as good a friend as you can have on television, as good a friend as you can have in life, absolutely a musical genius, Paul Schaefer. It's the CBS Thank you, How about that band? Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, David. You changed our lives. We've loved every second of it. It's... It's so obvious every night, and again tonight, that they are so much better at their job than I am <laughs> oh, at my I, job. I, I, uh, all, a part of the uh, uh, show uh, was m my mother, for gosh sake. Oh, thing. yes. No, that's well, I don't know. That's, <laughs> no, that's, the, that's, the, that's Betty that's White. The, no, yeah. it's Betty White. Yeah. Let me see my mom. There she is. There's mom. I remember the first time we were going to have Mom on the show, and I called her, and I said, Mom, uh, we would like you to be on my show. And Mom said, you have a show? <laughs> and it's been nothing but fun ever yeah. since. Uh, I want to thank my own family, my wife, uh, Regina, and my son, Harry. Thank you. <laughs> Look at that kid. Just seriously, just thank you for being my family. I love you both. And really, nothing else matters, does it? And before the show, Harry wanted me to introduce his buddy, Tommy Roboto. Tommy, right there. There's Tommy. Go get him, Tommy. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I want to thank the, uh, the folks at home. You know, uh, people come up to me all the time and they say, Dave, I've been watching you since your morning show, and I always say, have you thought about a complete psychological workup? <laughs> the people who watch this show, uh, there's nothing I can do to ever repay you. Thank you for everything. You've given me everything. And thank you again. Let me tell you a little something about Foo Fighters. First of all, can we show the picture that we were going to show of my son before he stood up? Let me, here's, here was the picture we were going to... 
<laughs> beautiful, beautiful boy. Yeah, he's, he's a beautiful. We've had him to all the best clinics. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, 15 years ago, I have uh, open heart surgery, and uh, these people saved my life. They, uh, and I'm out, uh, not doing the show for like five or six weeks, and, and uh, I'm in uh, talking with uh, Sheila Rogers, and she says, well, on your first show back, uh, is there anything special you would like musically? And I said, well, uh, yeah, and, and we got to talking, and we uh, said, what about Foo Fighters? They had been on, I think, at that time, four or five times, and she said, well, I'll ask them, uh, but it could be a problem. And I said, well, just ask them. And, and also, I, there's a song of theirs I would like to hear. It's, it's special to me. It's been meaningful through my heart uh, recovery. It would be just great. Two days later, she calls back and she says, well, uh, there's some, we have some, uh, they're on tour in South America. And I said, oh, darn. And she says, well, that's all right. They canceled the tour. She said, they are coming back to do the show, and they are doing the song that you asked for. And ladies and gentlemen, happily, ever since, we've been joined at the hip. God bless you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, that's pretty much all I got. The uh, only thing I have left to do for the last time on a television program, thank you and good night.